Hey everyone, if you're seeing this, you're probably watching the replay and I'm gonna be uploading this to YouTube. So you're gonna know that I'm doing a training for my team. So excited to be here tonight, um, to be sharing some knowledge with you in regards to building a business online with your Sensi business. Um, one of the things that you probably already know, you might not know, I live in a town of 192 people. It's a very small town. And if I had allowed that to be a deterrent, I would not be sitting here in my office as a superstar director, which is the highest title that you can gain within Sensi. I would not be still here almost nine years later if I had allowed that obstacle to turn me back. And so what I had to do was decide where I needed to dig my heels in, how I needed to dig my heels in, in order to build my business online to make it successful. And so what I wanna do is share some of that insight, that knowledge with you guys, um, so that you can move forward if you are kind of stuck, um, maybe learn some new things that you can utilize in your business. And um, yeah. Hopefully you can find some golden nuggets in some of this. I have some notes that I'm going to go over. I just don't want to forget things to talk about. Um, but I want to start off primarily by saying that this is definitely not an easy avenue to take when it goes um, to business building. And the reason that I say that is because in every business, no matter if you are a home party superstar or if you are an online social guru, it takes effort. It takes work. It takes action to be successful in this business, period. It is not going to fall in your lap. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not a one post about how much you love your business and all of a sudden you have all kinds of business happening. It isn't the way that it works. Okay. Um, you're welcome, you guys. So I want you to understand that learning plus action are going to give you the results that you need in your business. So no matter what I tell you tonight, I can tell you till I'm blue in the face, but if you do not take action on the things that you are learning, then you will not succeed. I know that seems kind of rough, um, but it's the truth, right? You, an, an employer, if you were hired from any company, and you walked in and just stood there, took the learning. Maybe you went to their classes, okay? You went to their orientation. You learned what you needed to do. And then let's say you're a cashier and you stood at the cash and you did nothing. You stood there and did nothing. One, the company would lose money on you because they're paying you to do nothing. Two, they'd be losing even more money because the people that are coming through your register would not be taken care of. They would lose customers and they would lose business. And then ultimately you would get fired. Truth, truth. You can't expect, especially if you're a, an entrepreneur and a self-employed entrepreneur, which we are, we're independent contractors, right? We're independent consultants that work for a business. If you went to work, or if I went to work here every day and did nothing, I learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn, and I did not take that information and apply it to my business by taking action with it, it wouldn't grow. I wouldn't make any money. I'd lose business. And therefore, in our business, I'd get canceled because I wouldn't be doing the minimum requirements needed to stay a consultant, which is 200 every four months. It's very minimal, right? 200 in a month, every fourth month. That's pretty simple and pretty, pretty minimal, right? That makes you a current consultant. 
if you do the minimum. If you do 200 every month, then that makes you an active consultant. You're actively running your business every month, 200 every month, right? You're not going to get canceled if you don't do 200 in a month, unless you go four months without doing 200 in a month. So do you understand what I'm saying? I don't want to sit here and give you guys training if you're not going to take it and apply it in your business. That's up to you though. Okay. All right. So I want you to understand that there's a lot of work that happens to make this business successful, right? Every day I wake up and I sit in my office or I'm on my phone running around doing other stuff, but I'm constantly working my business. And I'm gonna tell you some of the things that I do so that you understand how that happens, right? Okay, so the number one thing for building a business online is to build relationships online. Well, how do you do that, Edie? Well, I'm going to tell you. But it's so important that you build these relationships. And let me tell you that it can take a little longer to build relationships online than it does face-to-face. -face. Why? Because there's a level of trust that needs to be gained. And when you're doing it online, there can be a level of mistrust, right? We have this whole cat, cat uh, fishing thing that happened a long time ago. It still happens. So we're not 100% sure if we're trusting the people on the other end of the internet, okay? So it takes a little longer to gain trust from people and ultimately people buy from people they trust, right? So it can take a little longer, but the consistency that you hold, the consistency of you partaking in these relationship building activities that I'm gonna share with you, that's where the trust is gonna come from, right? The other beautiful thing that we have with online now that we didn't have when I first started is this, live, right? The ability to talk with somebody and let them see who you are, what you are, how you act, how you dress, how you take care of yourself. Um, you know, all of these things that go into a first impression, right? We can typically gain trust from somebody in the first 30 seconds of meeting them. Truth? True. Okay. So building relationships is ultimately the big umbrella of what we do online. That's what I do all day long, whether it's building relationships with current customers, building relationships with potential customers, building relationships with potential consultants, building relationships with you guys, the team members, right? Building relationships is ultimately the umbrella that builds this entire online business. Okay, seems pretty simple, kind of is. But you gotta do the action. You gotta build those relationships, right? Okay, so how do we build these relationships? How do we start conversations? How do we find people to build relationships? The easiest way online is to find commonalities with people, right? If you were going to try and find new clients, new customers, and you were out and about in town, you would find them at the grocery store. You'd find them at the doctor's office. Maybe you'd even join some clubs um, or some activities like a gym or uh, PTO or that sort of thing so that you could meet other people, right? It's kind of the same thing online, but you got to join groups. You have to find people with the same common interests. If you love gardening, then find people that love gardening. If you have puppies, then find people who have puppies and love them, right? Find common ground so that you can have a connection with someone because as soon as you find that connection with somebody, the trust level kind of, uh, it you know increases on a, a level that is better than just someone you don't know right because now all of a sudden you guys have the same interests and you can talk about it and you can kind of build this relationship right so how do you do that well you find videos on youtube of things that you enjoy you find groups on facebook of things that you enjoy when marissa had the twins she joined groups on Facebook for identical twin pregnancies. And then from there, she went to after they were born. Um, you know, you find common interests with people so that you can have that connection. 
All right, so you'll have to excuse the barking. I don't know why she's barking because nobody's here, but she likes to bark. So unfortunately you'll hear that in the background. Um, okay, so you find common groups, you find common Instagram feeds, you find common YouTube videos, um, things that you enjoy that have nothing to do with your business, nothing to do with your business right? So let's take YouTube, for instance. I'm going to go find people that love animals because I absolutely adore animals. Maybe it's people that love elephants. Who knows? I'm going to go find videos about elephants. I'm going to go find videos about dogs. I'm going to find videos about toy poodle Bichon mixes because that's what I own. So I, I don't know why I said own because I don't own them. Hmm. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go find those videos and I'm going to comment on, I'm not just going to watch them. I'm going to subscribe to their channel. I'm going to make comments on their videos. I'm going to talk about their videos. I'm going to ask questions about their videos, right? And I'm going to start to build a relationship with the person who created that video. All right. Now I'm building relationships. I'm going to go into groups about what they call Bouchons, which are toy poodles and Bichon mixes. I go into groups and I commiserate with them. I rub shoulders. I ask questions about their animals. I never talk about Sensi. I do not talk shop. Okay. I don't talk about Sensi on those videos. I don't talk about Sensi in those groups. First of all, they'll, they might kick you out because you should not be advertising your business in those groups. That's not what they're for. Right? So, I'm building relationships. I'm making friends. I'm building trust. Okay. I'm sharing about my dogs, right? Maybe asking questions about something that might happen or that might be going on. Now, again, this is not going to happen. One day you join a group and make a post and you think that you got friends and you've built relationships. It's just not how it works. Right. Okay. Um, so it's not going to happen with one post. It's not going to happen with two posts. It's not going to happen in one month. It takes time. You need to have patience when building businesses online. Now, hey, by all means, go for it and just advertise the heck out of your Facebook page. Watch what happens. People will unfriend you. People will be annoyed and you won't get business. Okay. That's just not how you're doing it. That's not how you want to do it. Okay. You want to build those relationships to build the trust. All right. So when you're in those groups, when you are in, um, you on YouTube or in, in on Instagram and you're finding these common grounds and you're building these relationships, what tends to happen is they're going to check you out. Okay. So it is vital that somewhere on your profile, you have information about you being a Sensi consultant. Now, it's fact. I argue it because I feel that that is a less abrasive way to let people know what you do for a living. Okay. Every, a lot of other people will put what their business is, not what their business is, but what their title is, where they work, that sort of thing. Do it. It's okay. I think it's okay. All right. Put it in your employment area. Right. So when they come check you out and they're like, oh, she's a Sensi consultant. All right, cool. The bug has been placed. Okay. The seed has been planted. All right. So they're going to come and check you out. You might even get a friend request. You might even get a follow, right? You might even get a subscribe on YouTube. Now they're going to probably start watching some of your videos so, <laughs> again. There is a time lapse that's going to happen as you are creating these relationships, okay? You are going to share your experiences with Sensi on your personal page, on your Instagram, on your Facebook page, on YouTube. It is almost inevitable that you can't just do one social media platform, okay? When you're building relationships and online is your only way to do it, you kind of have to delve into some other platforms, okay? Facebook is not going to cut it alone. 
Instagram is not going to cut it alone. YouTube is not going to cut it alone. You kind of need to learn some comfortable platforms for yourself and utilize those. Okay. So it's important to understand how to use those platforms. How do you use Facebook? Technically, how do you use YouTube? How do you up to up, upload a video? How do you, um, use Instagram? Okay. How do you utilize your board on Instagram? Maybe you use Pinterest, maybe you use Twitter. Okay. Find the ones that you like the best and utilize the heck out of them. Okay. Mine are Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Those are my three favorites. Okay. Um, so when they come and they're visiting your pages, it's vital that you have content there, right? It's vital that you have something for them to look at. So if you are using YouTube and you're just going to YouTube and not posting videos, you're not going to gain any business that way. You're just not because they're going to come to your channel and they're going to be like, oh, she doesn't have any videos. Ah. Right? They're not going to waste their time with you. Instagram, same thing. Make sure that you have some Instagram posts. Facebook, same thing. Make sure you have some Facebook posts. Okay, maybe even create a Facebook page so that your business is, is substantial there. Okay, one of the things that I strongly suggest, and this is something that has worked very well for me online, is experience marketing versus advertising. Okay, remember earlier I said, just go ahead and blast your business all over the place. People are going to get turned off immediately. That is blatant advertising, okay? There is a time and a place for that. It can work every now and then, but if that's all you're doing, it's not going to work for you, okay? That would be like turning on the TV and having commercials 24-7. Nobody wants it, right? Nobody wants it. So it's important for you to do what I call experience marketing. Experience marketing is when you share how you're utilizing Sensi in your business and in your home, okay? So if you're using the counter clean, then share a video of you using it, of how it works for you and your family. If you're doing some laundry, then share a video of how you're utilizing the laundry and what it does for your family. Or maybe just do a post about, you know, one of the experience marketings that I've done in the past for the laundry is that our dryer vent actually blows out at underneath the front porch and onto the front lawn. So if somebody drives into the driveway, very often, if I'm doing laundry and the dryer is going, they're going to get a huge whiff of whatever scent I'm using in my laundry out on the front lawn, in the park, in the driveway as they're coming in. Okay. So there's times that I'll make a post about that, right? That's experience marketing. It's something that I am experiencing with my product. Okay. If you're doing spring cleaning and you're using our, our cleaning products, then make a post about it and how you're utilizing it. I'm going to tell you right now, if you aren't using Sensi products, it's very difficult for you to sell them. Okay. So you want to make sure that you are utilizing them. Um, okay. Experience marketing is going to also play into you being authentic and less salesy, right? Sharing your experiences versus trying to sell through advertising. Does that make sense? So in order for you to um, share and not sell, you need to be using your own imagery, your own. Now, with the exception of Disney, because we have stipulations and standards around Disney, right? But if you hold, if I were to hold these guys and take a picture, that's totally fine. I can use that on Facebook and say, hey, you guys need to do, you need to get the Disney products because they're available, whatever. I love Disney. Noah loves Disney. My grandson loves Disney. Um, he absolutely adores these guys. Um, so use that. You know, if you've got kids, they're the best marketing and the experience marketing because they're going to tell you how it is. Do an unboxing with your child, right? So the experience of utilizing your own pictures and personalizing it versus using a canned image or maybe one from the marketing tab, make it personal, personalize it. People want to buy from you, not from somebody else, 
Okay. So be um, careful not to be using other people's images, right? Without one, without permission, but two, um, because if they know that it's not your house and you're showing a picture of somebody's house, I don't know, that's not very authentic. I have done it. Everybody's going to do it. But the more authentic you are and the more personalized you are, the more likely people are going to want to buy from you. Okay. Again, with the whole people buy from people they trust. So if they know that you're using your information, your house, that sort of thing, then they're going to trust you more. Okay. Um, okay. So building relationships, finding groups and commonalities and common grounds and same likes type of thing um, that you can be part of and experience marketing versus selling or advertising. Okay. Being more personalized versus just putting out content that's not yours. Um, find a niche outside of Sensi. So for me, it's always been direct sales training, right? That's my niche, finding people's purposes, helping them find their why. That's my niche. That's, that's something that is personal to me and it doesn't have anything to do with Sensi. Okay. So my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, um, I have that kind of stuff on there. Now, the other thing that I've found my niche in is I had bariatric surgery last year. And so now I have something else to talk about that draws people in and potentially get customers from that because they're going to come over to my page. They're going to see that I do Sensi and, you know, I don't talk about Sensi. I do kind of talk about Sensi with my bariatric, um, journey because I got to stay home because of my business and recover from surgery and that sort of thing. But as far as like advertising the two together, I don't necessarily, but again, it's experienced marketing since he's part of my life. So it's, it was part of the journey and it's been part of the journey. You get it. Um, so find your niche, find something that you're good at outside of Sensi and, and work with that too, so that you're drawing people in. Okay. Um, if you are a crafter, then make some videos on crafting, right? Show some of the crafts that you're doing. You're going to draw those people in. They're going to see that you're a Sensi consultant and potentially be your customer. Okay. Now, although you cannot advertise Sensi in those groups or on somebody else's video or somebody else's Instagram, if they come to you, and they're commenting on your page about certain things, and it lends into the conversation, you can start mentioning Sensi in that realm, not their realm, but in your realm, okay? And so that's how that kind of gets bled in there and starts to uh, take shape into a potential customer, okay? Um, create good content. Create content that people want to come back and read or see. Put positive posts on your Facebook page or on Instagram page. It invites people to come and see what you have going every day. Be consistent with your posting and your videos, okay? If you post once a week, that's not enough. If you post 30 times a day, that might be too much, okay? Find a happy medium and be consistent right? So people know what to expect from you. Okay. Um, and the last thing that I want to share with you guys tonight is utilize the new technology that has come to us. And that is go live. You are going to gain trust with people so much quicker through video than you will through a static post. Okay. A static post is just something that you put there with a picture, or maybe it doesn't even have a picture, but static means that it's just sitting there. There's no um, live interaction. So I can have live interaction right now with you because you're commenting while I'm live, right? So it gives us the ability to build this relationship for you to get to know me, to see how honest I am, and to um, understand how my character is right? Because you're getting to see me. So if you go live, that allows people that are watching to see you, to hear you, understand you better, learn about you better, right? The other thing about live is it's public, not just for your friends, not just for your followers, but it goes, pu it goes public. So it reaches a much greater audience out there in a time of 
being able to see it live, right? So if I went live on my Facebook page, on my profile page, it's public for everybody to see. So now I'm, people are getting notifications that might not necessarily be my friends. I'm reaching potential new customers. Same with my Facebook page. Now, if you do it in a group like this, then it stays private to the group, okay? So create yourself a VIP group, something for your customers so that you can go live, talk about new releases, talk about unboxings, doing with box unboxings, that sort of thing, right? Give them something to look for, right? And if you're consistent about it, they're gonna be looking for it every time you go live, okay? You can go live on every platform now. You can go live in YouTube, you can go live on Instagram, you can go live in Facebook, you can even go live on, on um, Twitter, right? So take advantage of that platform. That should be something that everybody is doing if you're trying to build your business online is definitely going live, okay? You can do Facebook parties live. You can do Instagram parties live. Just remember that we have to stay within our standards and you can watch that other video for that. Um, but those are the key things. Every day I come into work and I'm responding to every comment that is ever posted. That's key. Every comment that people make on my page or my YouTube or my Instagram, they get a response from me. Every person. Because that's my business. If I had a brick and mortar store and people were walking in the door and I was not greeting them or answering their questions, they would walk right out the door and never come back. Right? So I make sure that my storefront, which is social media, it's right here, that everybody gets my attention. Okay. It's time consuming, you guys. It's time consuming. It's work. It's effort. It's action. Okay. It's going to take you being online for a couple hours a day if you want to make a go of this. Okay. Now it can be an hour in the morning. It can be an hour at night, but it's going to take you some time to build that business through relationship building, through the social media access and, and common grounds with people and doing your uh, sharing, not selling, experience marketing, posting, and that sort of thing. Go live. Okay. Okay. Um, I hope that you found a golden nugget in this. Um, I hope that this is information that you can find useful to building your business online. Is there a secret potion? No, there isn't. The secret potion is you working it, doing the work that needs to be done to build those relationships because ultimately that's where the business is going to come from. Okay. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you guys later. If you have any questions, you can always post them in the comments and I will answer them for you if I can. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.